Ladies and gentlemen, are you still okay? All right, thanks. Um, all uh, protocols uh, observed. Um, just take a moment. Uh, we want to start by, I mean, I want to start by asking a, uh, a question to you. Uh, why is it that in your own country uh, you have more remandies or people who are awaiting trials compared to those that are convicted? The second question is, uh, why is it that the people who need not be in prison are in prison? Please have those two questions at the back of your mind when I'm taking you through the presentation. I hope you'll be able to, oh yeah, you're, you're right there, control it from there. I have no idea. Um, 15, almost 18 years ago, uh, when we met in Kampala, Uganda, it was confirmed that uh, when there is no access to justice, you have more people who are languishing in prison, even before they are found guilty. I thought, I mean, um, that meeting was um, not I mean, honest. Uh, three years later, I tried it in Zomba, one of our maximum prisons. I just said, okay, fine. I mean, we have so many people. Let me just look at children who are here. Uh, why are they here? Uh, you would see on my I mean, slide there, all the 179 children who were in prison were illegally detained. And they didn't realize that they were not supposed to be there. That is telling us that if um, there, is, there is no access to justice, I mean, these are the results or the consequences, I mean, uh, that uh, we have to bear. So what is it that uh, we are saying? I think, I mean, since yesterday, all, I mean, the purpose of coming to this conference is uh, how best can we have a legal aid delivery scheme which is practical, which is affordable, which is effective. That is, I mean, the main question. Uh, we are having this question because all along we, we have tried. Through the care, I mean, so many speakers have talked about that, has failed. Pro bono schemes, they have got their own problems. We don't have to go into those, but we can discuss later. So many, I mean, our governments are looking at alternative ways of, I mean, are trying to provide, I mean, um, legal aid, or to make sure that their people are able to access justice. Then you are saying, Clifford, yes, you are making noise. What is it? Um, right now, I want to share with you. Um, what paralegal advisory service can do to make sure that uh, those who are caught up in the criminal justice system are able to access justice. Um, can we um, uh, go on the uh, next, I mean, our uh, slide, please. Um, go to the next. Uh, I, I'm talking to you. I know most of you, you are lawyers. We are making a mistake to come uh, to find a system that can help us because we think from the point of view as lawyers, instead of thinking from the point of view of the people that need that assistance. If you don't, you were not careful, we we'll always make a mistake. So I am trying uh, to convince you that the people that we have out there in our police stations or prisons or reformatory schools, it's not that they always need legal representation. They, at times they just need an advice. Then somebody will say, yes, but I killed, I didn't intend to kill. That was a mini uh, accident. Somebody will say, hang on, I just want to get out of here. How would I, I mean, apply for bail? 
There are a number of things that can be done. Oh, somebody will say, yes, the court said I, 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 I can be released on bail. But there's nobody to stand in as a surety. Or my father, my I mean, guardian is not here. Therefore, this matter cannot move on. Or, I mean, we cannot I mean, conduct a victim of offender mediation. So you see that, I mean, these are the things that, I mean, uh, the people that are in the criminal justice system, many, uh, but uh, in most cases we tell that, okay, fine, the answer should be the lawyer here. Yes, I mean, I'm not trying to be dismissive of the, I mean, the lawyers, but, I mean, the lawyers, they need people to work with. Uh, basically, um, as time is running out, the paralegal advisory service uh, in my country and I mean uh, several other countries has helped I mean uh, to make I mean suspects or accused persons access justice as soon as they are arrested and detained. How do they do it? They are always in prisons, always in police stations, always at court to provide legal empowerment so that people can understand the law and how it affects, I mean, uh, them. Then, I mean, through, I mean, um, the legal advice and assistance, they know how to use the law to get themselves out of the system while, I mean, they are waiting for their lawyers. Or indeed, when the paralegals, they realize that this is a very complex matter, that is a point where they would refer this person to a lawyer. And of course, they should have done the donkey web of preparing, I mean, uh, affidavits, or indeed uh, taking any statement from the accused person. Thank you. Um, the paralegal advisory service has managed to work with the criminal justice system agencies so that people can access justice. In what sense? they are able to convince the court to move from their traditional, I mean, uh, courtroom to go to prison or any other place of custody and screen, I mean, those who are awaiting trial so that they can release on bail that those that deserve or indeed discharge, I mean, those that they deserve it because the prosecutors are not doing their job and, of course, uh, give others I mean, new days when they are supposed to start trial. Next, in police stations, and I'm saying this uh, knowing that uh, in my country, and maybe in uh, uh, most countries in Africa, it will not be possible to have lawyers in police stations 24 hours a day or defending each and every gym. Uh, it doesn't matter what I mean, offense you are accused of. So the paralegals, I mean, in police stations are there to hold, to hold the hand of a suspect to make sure that his or her rights are not violated. And indeed, if it is a minor, they would always be out there trying to contact parents or guardians so that, I mean, the process can, I mean, start right. And uh, believe me, the paralegals are there at times uh, because the police officers have asked them to come. They, they would telephone them, hang on, where are you paralegals? We have a child here, or we have a woman here. Can you come on and help her? This makes uh, people access uh, justice as soon as they are in trouble at court you find that some of the accused persons are not in prison. You didn't find them there, and they were not in police stations. They, they come to court. The paralegals are always there, giving them a last minute legal empowerment so that the person can understand what will be the procedure, what is it that I need to do so that I can help myself because I will not have a lawyer today. Maybe it, it will take I mean, a bit of time. Um, time is running out. I've said a lot, but you said, okay, Crawford, uh, what is this, uh, this scheme? Um, the scheme is very flexible. It has benefited us because we have money to reduce our remand population 
from 60% to below 15% at the moment. However, please, uh, uh, I don't want you to be misled. We have not managed to reduce congestion in our prisons. Why it is because the prisons were built years back and the population is growing. However, we have managed to take those that are not supposed to be there out of the system as soon as possible. Why? It is because we have been able to provide early, I mean, legal aid services. And the lawyers, the lawyers are very comfortable working um, side by side with paralegals. Why? It is because most of the work is done by the paralegals. The lawyer is just there to pick the file, go to court, and argue. How nice is that? Because lawyers are special people. You don't have to waste their time uh, providing legal empowerment or you call civic education. That can be done by other people. I hope you have more questions. I mean, let us, let us chat. Thank you. If I have not helped you, I sincerely apologize. <laughs>